Welcome to Honest News Network. We are on the premises. We are at the door, folks. Total chaos is about to ensue. And out of that chaos will come forth a new world order. The chaos will come because of a collapse of the economy globally, which will begin in foreign countries, Japan, and it, it, it's going to be a total collapse. The European Union is all going to culminate into a global one world government very soon. It's going to happen so quickly, so fast, that, uh, as the Lord put it to me, even my own people won't believe it, though they see it before their eyes. And again, I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, why won't your people believe it, even though they see it before their eyes? And he said, if they do not believe my words, they don't believe my word, They will not believe it when they see it before their eyes. Men's hearts are going to fail them because they're watching the things that are coming upon the earth. Several years ago, I've shared this before, but I have new listeners now and I want to bring this back to your remembrance for you that have heard this in the past, but also for the new listeners. Several years ago, my pastor received a dream from God. Just to give you a little bit of uh, credibility for my pastor, this is a man that has fasted 40 days and 40 nights many times and is a man of prayer. Uh, so man of fasting and prayer. And his, his scheduled uh, custom of prayer was uh, three hours minimum. He would get up at five in the morning. That was his custom. And I know this because many of those mornings I joined him in prayer. But from five o'clock in the morning until eight, Uh, 8 o'clock in the morning, would be his routine. That was his custom. And while he was in prayer one morning, he said, the same voice, get this folks, the same voice that he heard in a previous dream. Now, Let me share with you first the dream. The dream was not a visual dream. It was God speaking to my pastor in the dream. And this is what the voice said. I'm not sure altogether if there was some visual in the dream, but he never shared it with us. But he did share the audio. He did share the vocal part of this. He said, the voice said, the bear is not dead, only wounded. That was the first thing the the, the voice said to my pastor. The bear is not dead, only wounded. Now we know the bear to be Russia. In other words, Russia is not completely destroyed, it's just wounded. And we're seeing Russia now coming back on the scene. For years, Russia has been wounded and has not really been a superpower or tried to be a superpower, but now the bear is rising. And we see in the scripture that Russia is going to be, we see it in prophecy, we see it in scripture. Meshach and Tubal, we see Russia. 
but we don't see the United States. All we see of the United States is the feathers of the lion being plucked. That's all we see of the United States of America. So, the voice said, the bear is not dead, only wounded. And then the voice said, five things will transpire. Now remember, this was years ago that my pastor received this from God. Five things will transpire. The first thing the voice said would transpire, you will see a change in the economy. There'll be a change in the economy. That is right now at the door. We are about to see a change in the economy globally. It's going to be catastrophic. It's going to change everything. It's not going to be business as usual. You listening to me, folks? I don't want to go into all the details right now, but I'm just going to lay out this dream for you and share what the Lord has laid on my heart. So you'll see a change in the economy was the first thing. The second thing, listen to this, folks. Russia will attack Israel. First, a change in the economy. Then Russia, the bear, the wounded bear, will attack Israel. Right now, Israel is fighting with the allies of Russia. You don't think Russia is going to come to their aid? You don't think Russia is going to come to the aid of those in the Middle East that they have strong alliance with? Oh, yes, they are going to. So Russia is going to attack Israel. Are you listening? Russia will attack the United States. Now, whether that means that Russia, now this was, the the voice said Russia would attack Israel, that, and then Russia will attack the United States. That's three things transpiring. Changing the economy, Russia attacking Israel, and then Russia attacking the United States. Now, that doesn't mean that Russia has to attack the United States on its own soil. It could be that the United States is going to come to the aid of Israel, and there'll be a war with Russia, Israel, and the United States, and other countries over there. That's what we see in Scripture culminating. So it doesn't mean that Russia's got to attack the United States' homeland. And then the voice said, great persecution will come to the church in the United States and around the world. So you know who's behind that, right? That's the devil. Great persecution will come against the church. Now that's not talking about altogether the charismatic or the Catholic, that, you know, the worldly church. That's talking about the real church of Jesus Christ. Great persecution is coming to the church. That's how God's going to wake up the church. It's going to allow great persecution. And then he woke up from the dream. And he said, God... Now, now he, when he woke up from the dream, he went to prayer. And this is where we pick up when I was telling you that the same voice that he heard in prayer is the same voice he heard in his dream. So now he is on his knees praying and he says, God, the voice said five things would transpire. 
He said, I only heard four things. And the same voice that he heard in the dream spoke to him while he was awake on his knees praying and said, you woke up. And God made him to understand that through great persecution, the church will wake up. So right now, I believe we're at that place of the change in the economy. Now, I just shared a link to a video that I believe is very important for every, every person to see, not just God's people, but everybody should see it. And these two men in this video have been studying the cycles of the economy uh, as far as booms and busts and collapses and, you know, just been watching all the way back to Babylon. They've been studying this all the way back to the Babylonian kingdom, way in the beginning. And they said, it's the same. There's a cycle. And they said, we are right now at the door. And this is what they called it. And I don't even know if these are godly men. They called it the tribulation. The tribulation. This is the beginning. They, they, they said it would be a roller coaster through hell. Interesting because that's what the news just recently called the fire in California right now. They said they said the city of angels is beginning to look a lot more look look a lot like hell. That was in the news, in the headlines of the news. You see, the fire of God's judgment is inching closer and closer to Hollywood. Judgment is coming. Are you listening to me, folks? God's wrath. God is restraining himself right now. Until he which letteth be taken out of the way, then that wicked shall be revealed. God is warning. God is dealing with this generation. These fires are not just Anomalies, folks. God judges with fire. And he judges with wind. And he judges with floods. We're just in the beginning stages of the tribulation hour, folks. We are at that place the scripture calls the beginning of sorrows. Are you listening to me? So, what these gentlemen, and I, I would strongly encourage you to go watch this video. They're not trying to sell anything. You know, a lot of these videos, they're trying to sell something. No, these two men are simply giving warning. And they said, there'll, there'll be no place to hide when the economy begins to collapse. It's going to be terrifying. But... In my opinion, there'll be no place to hide. And this is the same thing I've been telling you all along. There will be no place to hide. I know there are those out there that think that they can hide in some country or somewhere on this earth and escape the impending total complete collapse that's coming. They, see, they have to have this collapse to bring about a one-world government. They have to have this collapse of the economy to bring about the one-world economy or the one-world money system. Right now, behind the scenes, the banks, the World Bank, the IMF, they are scrambling. You won't see it on the surface. But the banks right now are so worried. There's going to be in a, a, a hike 
in the interests, interest rates very soon. And you're going to see taxes increase like never before. Our, our country is bankrupt. The United States of America is in debt. Are you listening to me? I'm sure Donald Trump thought he was going to fix things. Let me tell you, his interests are not just for the United States. I'm sure that Donald Trump is on board with the global plan, the plan of a one world government. Um, Donald Trump celebrates the United Nations in If he really thought the United Nations was a bad thing, he would be fighting against it, right? He'd be trying to get the United States to be separate from the United Nations. Instead, he celebrates it. He's all for globalization. Anybody that has big money is for globalization because they want to have, you know, total free trade. They want it to be an open market globally where there's no stops. Are you listening? Where there's no ebb to the flow of money. And right now there's all kinds of ebb, there's all kinds of ebb and flow because of the the lack of free trade. But let me, let me tell you, folks, Donald Trump going around the world making friends seemingly with all these countries, he's only concerned about himself. Are you listening to me? He is a businessman. He does not care, and I would say this quite frankly, he does not care about this country as far as the citizens or this country as far as the country. He knows the United States of America is a corporation. He knows that. And he knows all about loopholes. And he knows all about corruption. He knows how the system works. He knows there's two sets of rules. And he knows how to play the game. He has nothing at stake. At least he doesn't think he does. Who really has everything at stake in this country is the citizens and the poorest of this country in which nobody's doing anything about. That's right. They hide their eyes from the poor. They do nothing for those that are homeless. There's really hardly any talk about it in the news about how many people right now are living in tent cities that are living on the streets and living in their vehicles. There's no talk about this in our national news. And that's why we're going to talk about it on Honest News. That's why we're going to talk about it right here. Let's not forget the poor. Amen? Be ready. Whenever the Lord would use you to be a blessing, to be a help, to be an aid to someone that needs help. The peacemakers of the United Nations are not helping anybody. In fact, they go into countries and spoil them. They don't go in to countries to help aid them. They go in to destroy the country. They go in to take over the country as they took over Haiti. They've totally, completely taken over Haiti. Set up their whole uh, base over there. They got their own landing, uh, their own airport. Aside from the airport in Port-au-Prince, they've got their own military airport. You listening to me? Now, it's very very plausible to see the United States of America following the same 
pathway, the same lead, following the same direction as Haiti. That's right. How many know the United States of America can become a third world country? That's right. It can. It can happen. If there is civil unrest and people begin burning things down and on top of that you have flooding, you have fires, you have problems not only from the people, from the citizens, but also from the weather. And then on top of that, you've got God's judgment. And then you got the devil. You know, the Bible says, is this, this is the one that made the nations to tremble? That made kingdoms to tremble? So there's this culmination of this perfect storm. We are in the tribulation hour, people. We are in the beginning of, Right now, of the seven years of what Daniel prophesied. We are right now at the beginning of the seven years. And if this is true, how should we be living? Knowing these things. Are you just going to turn your A blind eye, folks? Are you just going to live in ignorance? Are you just going to stick your head in the sand? We are at the beginning of the end. We are in the countdown of the seven years. And the last three and a half years of that seven years is the great tribulation. I told you folks, and I've been feeling it and sensing it more and more every single day. I'm not going to be here much longer. Hallelujah. I know that. I sense that even as I'm speaking right now. Everything's about to change. It's all about to change. I hope you're not just going to continue to go throughout your day with your head in the sand. I hope you will awaken out of your slumber, out of your stupor, out of your apathy and realize that this is not about having a job. This is not about paying your bills. Are you ready to meet your maker? Are you ready to meet the creator? Are you ready to meet God? Hallelujah. Are you ready? I was thinking months ago about a message entitled, Ready or Not, Here I Come. Amen. The Lord's coming, whether people are ready or not. But the scripture says, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. That's what it's all about. It's all about being ready. You can't be undone. You can't lack. Are you listening to me? You can't be in want, folks. You can't be lacking. When that handwriting came upon the wall, it said, You are weighed in the balances and found wanting. David said, 
The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You and I cannot be in want. We cannot in any way be lacking, brothers and sisters. The Lord has made provision for us to be complete, for us to be whole. There is no excuse. If you are lacking in this hour, it's because of a lack of faith. That's why you're lacking. And there's no other reason. If you lack faith, you will lack. You will come up short. Amen. That's how we purchase in the kingdom of God. Buy of me gold, tried in the fire. We purchase, our purchasing power is faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Listen to me. The more faith you have, the more buying power you have. The more gold tried in the fire that you can buy. And the more rich you can be in the kingdom of God, brothers and sisters. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of the Lord. Hearing the word of God. Listen to me. You need the word of God. But not just the word of God, but an understanding of the word. Because his word produces faith. The more confidence that you have in God, the more rich you will be. Are you listening? We need to be rich in faith, saints. God has chose the poor of this world rich in faith. Amen. All this, all this uh, temporal stuff that man accumulates, all their metal and all their comforts of this life their metal and their plastics and their all the different fabrics and all the things that man fabricates and builds and makes to make himself feel better and make himself feel more comfortable. It all falls short of the glory of God. All the technology... All the AI, every single bit of it falls short of the glory of God. Amen. Peter said, silver and gold, have I none. But he wasn't empty. But such as I have, give I thee. You have something, Peter? Yeah, I have something and I want to give this to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. All the money in the world can't do that. Amen? Isn't it interesting, those that say to the Lord, didn't we prophesy in your name? Didn't we cast out devils in your name? Didn't we eat and drink in your presence? But they never asked the question, didn't we heal in your name? Because all those out there like Benny Hinn and those liars and deceivers that say they have a healing ministry, they know they don't. And they never ask that question. They never ask that question. Only Jesus heals. Amen? The devil doesn't heal. The devil make you sick. And the devil can move sickness around. Are you listening to me, folks? But God will heal you. Hallelujah. He'll deliver you. Praise God. The devil can't do that, folks. The devil can take a sickness 
and put it on you. The devil can take it off of you and put it on someone else. But he can't heal you. He can't deliver you. Only Jesus can heal. You'll find those that go to these ministers that supposedly they got healed, they find out they have something worse than they had before they got there. That's what happens when you fool around with the devil. He'll mess you up more than you were messed up the last time he touched you. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I'm going to say it again like I said yesterday. Your silver and your gold is going to perish. It's not going to be able to deliver you in the day of judgment. Brothers and sisters, there's only one thing that can deliver you and I. Amen? The precious blood of Jesus. The precious blood of Jesus. The precious blood. The pure, untainted blood of Jesus Christ. We must have faith in His sacrifice, His blood. Remember hearing a man say to my pastor, he says, I don't understand how a man's blood can wash away my sins. And my pastor said, well, I agree with you. But Jesus is not just a man. Amen. God in the flesh. His blood is not just blood of another spotless lamb. His, his blood was not blood of just another man. Amen. Supernatural. Hallelujah. The life of God was in his blood. Praise the Lord. Glory to God and only his blood can wash the sins of men. Only his blood can prepare you to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Only his blood. It's time for God's people to only seek the true riches. Seek those riches that are above. Store up your treasures in heaven, not on the earth. Let me say this, people. It's all going to pass away. Amen. All of it. Like the scripture says, when you're gone, then whose will those riches be? You know, you look at somebody like Warren Buffett. As far as heaven goes, he's done nothing. Amen. His name is not even in the Lamb's book of life. When you look at those today, that like the guy that owns Amazon, he's done nothing in the eyes of God. He has no credit with God. He has his name's not in the Lamb's book of life. You think about it, folks. All those on the earth today that men worship and idolize and wish they could be. God says, I don't even know you. Amen. I don't even know you. You worker of iniquity. I never knew you. You know, someone like Warren Buffett's getting ready to leave this world. He's getting up there in age. He's not going to stand before the Lord and get in. Listen to me. What, what, did, what did Peter say to Jesus about the rich getting into heaven? What was his question? He said, are there few that be saved? 
But he went on to ask the Lord, is it a hard thing for a rich man to enter into the kingdom? Listen to me, people. Listen to me. The Lord said to Peter, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. Few there be that finds that narrow gate that leads to life. It's hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom. Peter couldn't understand that. He was besides himself. And he was asking the question, who, Lord, then can be saved? Who can be saved if the rich can't be saved? See, the Catholic Church, they tell you take your millions of dollars and give it to them and they'll make sure you make it over there to heaven. Purgatory, man-made doctrine, doctrines of devils. Silver and gold is not going to deliver you. Salvation is free. It's a free gift. Amen? You can't purchase your salvation. You cannot buy salvation. It's a gift. And you must accept salvation as a gift. Why did God do it that way? Because God's objective was to destroy pride. And you can't boast about a gift. Amen? That's why Paul said, where is boasting then? It's excluded by faith. It's excluded by grace. You're saved by grace, not of works, lest any man should boast. Someone that's truly saved, born again, received the gift of salvation and the gift of the Holy Ghost, they will be humble. They will be meek because they realize they didn't do it. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is holy. There must be meekness in humility, in the life of those that have experienced the grace of God. If there's no humility and there's no meekness, you have not experienced God's grace. God gives grace to the humble. If you need more grace, there's more grace to be received, but you got to humble yourself to get more grace. Amen. I don't know how many ministries out there are going to tell you about the true riches, folks. The riches of His grace. The riches of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Jesus said, my kingdom's not of this world. Amen. Praise the Lord. When are God's people going to get that message? His kingdom is not of this world. That's why Jesus said, look up. Look up. Get your eyes off this world. Look up. Straighten up. It's time to be ready. Amen? Our redemption is at the door. Our redemption is at hand. Hallelujah. Any day now. Any day now. Glory to his name. Praise his holy name. Be found in him with peace. Amen. Make sure his peace rules your heart. If his peace is not ruling your heart, you want to find out why. Why am I troubled? Why is my heart troubled? You're troubled because there's something wrong. But if you have peace, 
with God. And your conscience is clear. There's nothing greater. Oh, praise the Lord, people. There's nothing greater than a clear conscience and a heart that's at peace with God. Hallelujah. The wicked can't say that. The billionaires and trillionaires can't say that. The rulers of darkness of this world can't say that. Amen? God's people should never envy the wicked. Never envy the wicked. If you have been envying the wicked like David did, ask God to forgive you. Stop coveting their silver and gold. Stop coveting what they have. Hallelujah. Be content with what you have. Be thankful for what you have and God will multiply it. God will give you an increase. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full into his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full into His wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim In the light of his glory and grace.